Howdy, Dragon Con, and welcome to the Ninth Doctor Returns panel for, for from Brit Tracks. My name is Mike Faber. I am the host of the Earth Station Who podcast, and we are going to be talking all about Christopher Uckleston returning to Big Finish as the Ninth Doctor in Ravagers, and it's going to be a great, great discussion. And we got a great bunch of folks to talk to us tonight. Let's welcome our crew here tonight, and let's say hi to Mr. Mike Gordon. Howdy. Ms. Mary Ogle. Hi, everybody. It is fantastic to be here. And author Matthew Kressel is here. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be. Exactly. We don't know what time this is going to be playing. So good, <laughs> don't good know day. What time it is usually anyway. Exactly. It would be like Bob, Bob and Doug McKenzie. Good day, eh? You know, but, you know, I think that could be a little weird. But, you know, thank you. And howdy, Dragon Con. And this is going to be a really good one to talk about. Uh, you know, we've all missed the Ninth Doctor and his run as, you know, Christopher Eccleston's run as the Ninth was way too short, just one season. And we thought hell would have to freeze over for us ever <laughs> to see Christopher Eccleston back as the Doctor. Well, folks, enjoy the snow because hell froze over. He's back. <laughs> And it is going to be a lot of fun to talk about Ravagers. And it was a three-part, you know, three-story line. Uh, but not like most big finishes, a lot of them, when they do it, it's one and dones. They, a, lot, a lot of times they don't carry on over through the whole storyline. And this one did. And so this it was a three parter. Yeah, this yeah. was really yeah. one story. It was one big yep. story and mm -hmm. literally with cliffhanger endings and everything, which was pretty awesome to see, you know, because we we only got um, two two parters. Well, technically three, three um, yeah. in uh, Eccleston's era. So it was very interesting to, you know, listen to him back and he just jumped in. It didn't feel like he missed a beat with this, uh, you know. I think we all we've talked in length on Earth Station Who about the Night Doctor in the past, and we all have our loves and our hates. But you know, my hate for it is gone. He, she's not even in this. So. <laughs> hey, she's good in this this series. She's so, good with the Ninth Doctor. Yeah, she actually. Jo all joking aside, you know, Rose. This is the era when I did like Rose. I thought she was great with the Ninth Doctor, but I also liked the Ninth Doctor with Captain Jack, and also a little bit with Mickey. But you know, more like Rose and Captain Jack were pretty awesome. But this one, the Doctor gets a new companion. Yes, get a Nova. Yes. Yeah. This this takes place before the events of uh, Rose, so um, we are uh, introduced to yeah. I mean, a new companion for for now. Um, you know, I don't know how that's gonna. How that's going to play out, but um, I thought that was interesting that they, well, it kind of makes sense that they would do it before. Um, I think they, you know, I don't know. I don't, you know. Hold on, Mikey. I, Let's do one thing, though. I know she hasn't been introduced in the Ninth Doctor era yet, but spoilers, we are going to be talking about <laughs> yes. this, a lot of this. So, you know, as River Song likes to say, we are going to spoil the hell out of this one. Sure, so, sure. So, the uh, yeah. Sorry, but I think we, a lot of us, you know, we're not sure if, um, uh, you know, what what Chris was going to bring to the table and how comfortable he was going to be working with other uh, Doctor Who actors. Yeah. Um, you know, whether he wanted to jump right back in and, and do adventures with, uh, you know, Captain Jack and Rose and all of that. Um, and I think, you know, having him start off on an adventure on his own pretty much. Uh, was pretty much a safe bet, you know, as far as just let's let's do a doctor story with just Chris, get that under our belts before we go forward with anything else. And I was kind of surprised that, you know, we were going to get a uh, companion this early. Well, I think as well, if you go back and you look at the other Ninth Doctor spinoff stuff that's available, you know, Charlie Hickson's uh, 2013 tale from what was then 11 Doctors, 11 Stories, or some of the big finished short trips for that matter, or go back two or three years to when they did the Ninth Doctor Chronicle set, which was a narrated set with Christopher Eccles, uh, not with Christopher Eccles did not being involved, but uh, Nicholas Briggs effectively playing the Ninth Doctor. There were stories all throughout those, which were set, 
you know, pre rose as it were. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's just the easiest thing to do in many ways from a continuity point of view, mm -hmm. but also that you don't have to worry about character arcs. I mean, that's one of the things about the way that one Eccleston TV season was laid out was it does have a very definite beginning, middle and end to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's something that makes it really difficult to go in and insert stories into without, you know, either undermining the storytelling on TV or the story you're trying to tell, whether it's in, you know, whether it's in prose or whether it's on audio. Right. Right. Yeah. There's just some things you have to keep in mind though, going in. Cause um, you know, this has to be a sort of broken uh, war torn doctor uh, cause this is before he sees Rose and sort of gets, uh, all sort of acclimated to that. Um, so you're going to have to, that's the doctor you're going to have to end up with, uh, in this. Yeah. And I think that was pretty true. I mean, you know, Chris did an amazing job as the doctor and this was the return of doctor who after a long absence when he was, when he made his debut. And yet there were a lot of characteristics that were, we were very familiar with, but there was also, he was a very different doctor, very, more different than I think any other doctor, actor who had played the doctor before him. Oh, very was, much yeah, so. Yeah, he was very haunted. And that exactly. that really came across. There was, there was definitely a darkness to him that- Well, mm -hmm. it was interesting because even in the mm -hmm. storyline, you got a little bit of a, a long dead race that he yeah. kept on bringing up. He didn't bring up the Time Lords. He didn't bring up Gallifrey. He just, you know, as when he mentioned, you know, anything about where Audrey's, you know, device came from, it was mm -hmm. from, you know, he said, no, I didn't create this. This is from a long dead race, you know, yeah. a couple of different times. he brought Yeah. This. I mean, yeah. he did well at, at getting across that he was struggling with something. Yeah. yeah I mean, exactly. whether you knew what it was or not, this, this was definitely somebody who had a lot on his mind. And, yeah. and I, I thought he he really stepped right back into the doctor's shoes. Oh, very yeah. much so. Very much so. I wouldn't recommend this for somebody though who's never seen a Ninth Doctor story though before. Because yeah, I think I could agree with that. Um, because you know, you you kind of need to know his background. And you know, whereas Rose in the first episode, it was he was a clean slate, Rose was a clean slate. This doctor we're getting in this is a doctor with a lot of baggage already on and you know and then you know he was already doing in this you know i promise you you're going to get this i'm going to take you to especially to nova you know i'm going mm -hmm. to take you to on that vacation i'm going to take yeah, you on that i'm going to fix things for yeah you. exactly yeah. and mm -hmm. so he had the integrity there but you could still tell this was not the same doctor even we saw in rose which was really interesting. Well, and he was very, um, he did not want to trust. <laughs> I mean, that, that really came across. He didn't, he did not want to believe what people were telling him. And it took him a long time to really figure out what Audrey was trying to tell him <laughs> throughout yeah. the whole, the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. well, I, I really enjoyed that though, because Audrey, you know, when you first get introduced to her, you know, she knows the doctor, but you, you assume that she is not who she says she is. She's the mustache twirling villain in yeah. this. And it's mm -hmm. far from that, which is pretty awesome because the yeah. doctor was going out of order. Right. And I yeah. mean, she's a very flawed character, but she's not an outright evil <laughs> character. Yeah. Right. I mean, her, her intentions come come from a good place yeah, yeah. but you have to be what, like almost like into the third storyline to right, figure, that you, part you out. figure that out right yeah, yeah. and it, it then becomes a question of do the ends justify the means which you know is something that keeps coming back up again and again throughout this all, all of this yeah i think that was actually kind of the main theme of, of the whole thing mm-hmm and I mean, and that actually relates to the ninth doctor and what, what he's going through, because that's how he feels about his actions in the, in the time war. And yeah. He's done. No, very much so. And, you know, and it's going to be, it's interesting because you're trying to figure out, is he newly regenerated? Is, has he been traveling on his own for a bit? You know, that's, you know, the question for this, you know, you know what because when we meet him in rose he had never even seen what he looks like in the mirror or anything because you remember when he was in uh 
Rose's mom's apartment, he looked into the picture and he was playing with his ears. It's like, okay, I've seen more. <laughs> you know. right. and, yeah, I, I think they're going to have to kind of ignore that a little bit. Like, I don't think it's feasible that he's going to go through a bunch of adventures and not know what he looks <laughs> not, like. Not see himself ever. <laughs> no, well, exactly. yeah, he, yeah, there's. you could always pull the old Eighth Doctor amnesia trick out of the book somewhere along the lines <laughs> of one of the sets. That's true. No, yeah. that's true. But also, if you remember, there was that gentleman, I think his name was Graham or something that... Um, oh, Clive. Clive. Clive, that's it. And who had, had all these pictures of the ninth doctor, you know, on the at the Titanic, at the Kennedy assassination. Yeah. So he, obviously he had been doing other adventures before Rose. So this ties in perfectly with that. Yeah. I mean, it's, well, it's not, been uh, fairly clear for a while that the ninth doctor had a larger kind of history and backstory than what we'd ever seen on screen anyways. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, again, going back to the fact that they decided to set this Free rows and apparently the three box sets, which are incoming, so to speak, will be probably be setting that same thing as well. So it's interesting that they've chosen to do that. And Big Finish had filled in a couple of those gaps already. I know there's a there's a Big Finish Titanic story as part of the short trips range, and also one set at Krakatoa, which is another one of the big pictures that Clyde has had as well, which is part of the short trips. Exactly. So I definitely it's interesting and I enjoyed, you know. Chris as the doctor, literally from the very, you know, as soon as you heard him, I had a grin on my face. It was mm -hmm. just like, he's back, you know, yeah. and it, it was awesome. It was yeah. really awesome. And it was an easy listen. You know, there was a couple points. It's like, okay, do they know where they're going with this? But it was a, it was a fun story. Yeah. I mean, I feel like uh, one of the things that bothers me with Nicholas Briggs as a writer is his stories can be confusing, um, especially when he loves to do this cold open that that's a part of the later part of the story and then go back. And mm -hmm. that drives me crazy because it doesn't work well on audio. I mean, you're kind of you hear that and you're kind of lost. And then, you know, and then after the credits, it picks up again and you're oh, OK, that's OK. But and when I first heard that he had written all, all three stories, I was like, oh, no, I'm not sure how well this is going to work. But he did a good job. He really yeah. did. They were fun stories. I think for the most part, I I, I do think that he stretched out maybe a 90-minute story to, like, three hours. Uh, you know, I mean, I thought it was a little, like, padded. Um, I didn't Dr. mind Hood. it. Yeah, I know exactly. I'm not. I'm used to that. That's but, traditional. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> exactly. I was say, the um, war games, anybody? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, How I, many I six yeah. parters did we watch and say that could have easily been a four, three or four parter? You know. Yeah, so I guess he's keeping with that tradition, but um, um, yeah. So it got a little bit more convoluted at times than it needed to be. Um, but I, I, I did think that the energy was up most of the time. And uh, and everybody, you know, the cast was great. The rest of the, the supporting cast, uh, the person that they've got uh, voicing Nova is great. Um, she sounds like a really interesting character. I found it was really interesting, though. I mean, it, it's revealed at the end. So, as you guys said, spoilers. But it's revealed at the end that she's just a science fiction fan. And I just had to sort of laugh at that. And, you know, I guess it's only in the last few years that Chris himself has become let's say comfortable with science fiction fans and doing conventions and whatnot. So I find it really interesting. I don't know if this is the first time uh, that they've had a, a companion be like a sci-fi fan, but I thought it was really interesting to choose that. Yeah. I mean, what I was reminded of actually listening to it to a certain extent was Dark Eyes, that very first Dark Eyes set with Paul McGann's Doctor, because it's Nick Briggs wrote all four episodes of that. But it's that kind of approach where you're combining some of the kind of modern Who sensibilities with the kind of serialized storytelling that we're more familiar of with classic Who. And I think that that's something that Briggs seems to excel at is sort of mixing is sort of mixing his metaphors to an extent and that you mm. can sort of take these elements that those of us who are very familiar with classic who enjoy but also doing something that will appeal to the ninth dog to sort of the classic not to classic who but the modern who fandom as well and you know it i tend i do tend to think the more you know it could have been a very easily been a two cd release and you could have just done two 45 minute episodes but i think 
you know, if you're going to do that middle episode doesn't is not an act of wheel spinning, at least as far as I was concerned. There's enough going on there where they're sort of adding the layers to the mystery that keeps that, that keeps it going into that third hour. True. Um, I mean, it's, it's at least adding to the mystique of, of Audrey. Oh, that's exactly yeah. where I was right. about to go. Right. Yeah, that. that's true. You know, they added the whole thing that she's been talking to the doctor over the years. And, mm -hmm. you know, the doctor from even in the storyline future. So it was very interesting because everyone's like going, wait a minute. She's having discussions like, and I loved how, you know, because of it, you know, she had to go to psychotherapy and <laughs> because they thought she was like going nuts, you know, talking to her friend, the doctor, which, you know, leads right into Amy Pond, you know, you know. Yeah. Well, there was, was a, really there cool. was a weeping angels aspect <laughs> to this. Oh, yeah. The ravagers sending people back in time. Oh, very much so. And that was very interesting. The folds in time and, you know, it it was a real interesting story. I thought they killed off Nova just like that. And it was in the very first episode. And I was just like, well, that was interesting, you know, introducing this character and, you know, then wiping her out. So, yeah, the, uh, cool. the time eddies reminded me, obviously, of uh, Father's Day. Um, mm -hmm. and that sort of uh, mm -hmm. the repercussions of messing with time. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure, you know, I really got like a lot of that. A lot of that was just seemed like it was, uh, you know, just sort of mumbo jumbo, um, but um, which is fine, timey wimey, right? Uh, but um, I think at, at the heart of it though, was uh, the doctor realizing, once again, you know, he realizes that he he's, he doesn't have all the answers sometimes that he thinks he does, and and once again we see the dangers of what happens when the doctor travels alone, especially in New Who. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's been like we've been told time and time again that the doctor should not travel alone for obvious reasons, and and when we've seen that happen, bad things happen. Right. And here yeah. it's like here it's like end of universe bad thing um <laughs> right. <laughs> right well he, he was very blind to what was really going on he he had made up his mind in the beginning yeah. and he he was not going to be swayed easily yeah mm, exactly this was a doctor that think thought he knew it all and we saw that through his season also yeah and so this just was this was, you know, establishing it. And like, I know what's happening. I'm a time Lord. I know everything. And he was basically pushed on his ass. And so it was, it was great. I like that a lot actually. And it was neat that you had different characters doing that. Like doctor, that's not right type thing. It just wasn't the companion. Oh, doctor, what is it? Or something. Yeah, or, actually, it, there were a lot of interesting interactions between him and Audrey. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. Back and forth. Well, and, and it was interesting because they brought in, you know, quite a few characters that could be, you know, possible companions to him during this era, too. I could yeah. even see Audrey even eventually becoming a companion. There was, you know, towards the end. You know, type thing and yeah so you know it was it was real interesting to see and you know what you know what stood out to this for you for you guys you know what was like the defining moment all right this is a great story you know because there's certain parts and we've reviewed tons of big finish folks and you know and there's been some where it's just like i can't really think of a moment that just wowed me was there a wow moment in this for you guys I don't, I mean, I'm not sure there was a wow moment story wise, but I, I will say it was a wow moment when I first heard Christopher Eccleston's voice again. Yeah, that, it, oh, that's, it, it, that's hard, good. It's hard to get mm -hmm. past that. I mean, that's the, that's the wow mm -hmm. factor within minutes. You're, you're, you're taken back to that, to his run as the doctor. Yeah. And you don't think of him as he, you know, when he's talking, you don't think of him as a older man, you know, graying and how he looks now. You just, just by hearing his voice, you're just picturing that, like, uh, you know, <laughs> very close shaven, almost bald guy that's in the leather jacket, you know, that's just wandering around, walk, running around with a with a big smile on his face or not, uh, depending on the situation. And uh, it just, yeah, he got, 
I got to give Briggs credit. He got the the voice down pat. Like it just oh, did. It never, there was so. there wasn't anything that I felt like I don't think he'd really do this or say this. Yeah. I mean, for me, I mean, as, as thrilling as those opening few minutes are with him back in the role, there's a scene a few minutes into the first episode where they're back in 50s London and the British Army is trying to deal with those centurions mm -hmm. and he decides to go out and call parlay. And I think it was that scene and the way he kind of dealt with it, because it's kind of this classic, almost third doctor style sort of interactions between him and and the I think it's the lieutenant whoever it is whose name I'm blanking on at the moment, sadly. But it was just their kind of interactions and whatnot and him basically going, you can't go in there and shoot things through. That I, For some reason, I just kind of went, wow, he, he's really back. The, do the Ninth Doctor is really back and in place. Yeah. Is that mm -hmm. Faraday? Is that right? I yeah, Faraday? I think it was Faraday. That sounds right. Yeah. Well, Faraday was the one who was sent to track down the Doctor and go after him after the Doctor just pretty much went, I'm done here. You know? Right, you know, right. Uh, mm -hmm. And then uh, Faraday was got pulled into one of the ebbs, and the doctor had to rescue him because he was being chased by these huge metal robots. He, he was re accident. He was accidentally rescued. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, 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 he was not their target to rescue. Yeah. No, exactly. And that was cool. I geeked out when I heard the theme. I really, you know, because you know, we talked. We did recently on Earth Station Who. We did the Tenth Doctor and River Song, and they had the Tenth Doctor's theme. Now to hear the Ninth Doctor's theme song, mm -hmm. it was yeah. just like it was just like oh, and I pictured it right in my mind. And that's that's the cool thing about Big Finish, like you guys were saying, you don't see Chris Eccleston as an older gentleman now with a big gray beard like he has, and you know, and his hair grown out a little bit. I think of the U-boat com commander, you know, in the oh. in the black leather <laughs> and the black yep. slacks and the black t-shirt <laughs> and the really close cropped haircut. And, you know, and that's that's what I was picturing the whole time. And it was awesome. It, and that was, to Christopher Eccleston, you know, yeah. for being able to step right back in that that role and really yeah, the role, yeah. the role he, he swore he would never, ever play it again. That yeah, he, that he hasn't played in over a decade. Over yeah, 15 I mean, years, dude. Yeah. 15 years. Uh, now that we all feel easy. really old. But yeah. uh yeah, thanks, pandemic. Um <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I mean, that's you know, I mean, I think I think I think Chris would have come around anyway. It's not it's unfair to say that he's only doing this because he can't get work uh in front of the camera. Um because he's, he's loosening he, up even he has starting to yeah. warm up and do mm -hmm. conventions, and I think he's starting to see uh, at least in interviews, he said several times that uh, it's been a different experience for him that he thought uh, meeting people and seeing how they're connected to the show has uh, really touched him in ways that he didn't expect. Um, and, uh, you know, he's a very, you know, he's a very uh, controversial guy, personality, but he's also very sensitive as well. So um, and I think that that comes across in his performance. I mean, he really is a doctor of that time period. Um, a lot of times I think of actors who are doctors any of the, the time period uh, that, you know, is not really, they're like sort of bucking the trends of the time, you know, standing out. Whereas Chris kind of really just, his doctor really fits in with, uh, you know, the late nineties, early two thousands, his, his manner, his dress, his attitude. Um, you know, he's on the one hand, he's not, you know, he loves humanities. He loves earth but he's not really afraid to like point out to in, in their face, like how stupid they're being. Um, and uh, I think <laughs> he's got like angst to him, you know, and, uh, and I think he, you know, he steps right. This is, this is that doctor. This is that same yeah. doctor mm -hmm. who, who uh, is, is experiencing all of that. And a lot of it, like you guys have said, is, is the baggage that he's carrying with him from the, from the time war, et cetera. But um, you know, I don't, I don't know how much of that Chris knew, beforehand when he originated the role and i don't really know how much he's really like i don't expect that he's gone through a lot of the you know he's maybe told a few things but i doubt he's like he's really like studied new who to the extent that he's like he knows everything that's happened quote unquote to his character 
Yeah, I, I would doubt that too, based on what he said in interviews and whatnot. I mean, he, he certainly has given indications that he's followed it here and there. Um, mm -hmm. Stephen Moffat, in the lead up to Day of the Doctor, when he was trying to convince Eccleston to come back, uh, talked about in interviews that they sat in the office one day and had a long conversation about Amy Pond, of all things. <laughs> um, so he, he, he certainly has some knowledge of it, but I don't think, and he would himself say, I think, in, in the extras from the release, that he's still by, he by no means counts himself as a fan. Right. Um, but I think certainly I think that the interaction with we the fans, I you know, at, at events and I think particularly at Gallifrey one last February, um, there's I know Jason A. Ellery said in an interview here recently, Jason A. Ellery, for those who don't know, is the owner and executive producer at Big Finish, said that they got very lucky that they had that Big Finish has a big presence out at Galley. So that when people were asking him about it on stage and he got to feel all the love and the excitement and the anticipation that people had about him potentially doing it, he could literally walk off the stage and they could go up to him and say, so those audios that you've been just been asked about, we're the people who do them. Might you be interested? Um, and then also, I think just to talk about Eccleston's enthusiasm for it, as Briggs talks about on the extras, that the original plan was he was going to come in and do one box set. He was going to come in and do one box set in three episodes, kind of like they had done with John Hurt and with Derek Jacoby to kind of just bring them in as a kind of a taster. And instead, Eccleston went, no, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Give me a season. Give me 12 scripts and we'll go from there. So clearly, I think he, you know, I think he had to be talked back around to it. I mean, we still don't know all the details of what happened behind the scenes during the making of that TV season. We know that especially at the beginning, it was not a pleasant experience by most accounts. Right. Um, so he had to be, I, I, I think it's fair to say he had to be talked back around, but I think that now that he's back in the saddle, I think he, we may not be able to get rid of him. And I'm certainly not complaining about that. <laughs> no, I mean, he committed and you could tell he committed yeah, um, very to his much performance. So. Yeah. He's not just phoning this in. No. Exactly. Or zooming it in. I I speaking of those uh behind the scenes, you know, the bonus material, I did find it interesting when he when they when he's asked about Doctor Who, he says the first image that he thinks of is Patrick Troughton and uh in black and white. And he really, you know, wishes that he'd been able to do a black and white uh episode of Doctor Who. And I, I find it interesting that that's his his doctor, I guess, if you will. Although I don't think it's fair to say, I don't think this is true at all. I think if any of the actors that didn't, that sort of ignored everything that came before him, as far as the doctor goes, I think Chris did. I don't think it, you know, when you ask him like, Oh, what doctor do you, are you pulling from or inspired you? I don't think any of them are the case. Uh, Cause his take on the doctor is so remarkably different that I, I just don't see any ties there really. Yeah. No, agreed. Um, and it's very interesting because, you know, you always hear like, you know, because you have Tennant, who was a fan boy. You have Matt Smith, who looked at the, the second doctor to base his doctor on. And then you had Capaldi, who was a fan. And so it was really interesting. I don't I never got that feeling with Eccleston's doctor. I think no. that was an original completely. Yeah. And, it, and it fits his doctor. Uh, like to be to not be like anybody else, uh, you know, he, he's been through experiences that none of the other doctors have been through. Um, and he's got, you know, as we keep saying, he's got a lot of baggage. So, um, you know, he, he does what he can to like offset that baggage every time he can. And that's got to be a tricky doctor to write for. I would imagine that the big Finnish folks and on the one hand are like feeling they're just chomping at the bit, the, uh, what stories they could tell with him. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, um, you know, and I also, you know, we spent, said this about the um, uh, the River Song and Tenth uh, Tenth Doctor Adventures. Like, I like how uh, Briggs is like he calls like on, on these special occasions. He he always calls executive privilege. Is like it's me. I'm writing it. I'm directing. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> yeah. <Darn> it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I. <laughs> Yeah, circling back around to Briggs and the writing for this, I mean, one of the things I, I, I feel kind of grateful for is that, you know, there, there's an old saying in, in classic Who fandom that the memory cheats. And there certainly is a fan memory of the Ninth Doctor as this kind of dour, slightly depressed figure. And the fact of the matter is, is that he had a, he had a much lighter touch to it. 
you think about the way he's introduced in Rose, for example, you know, taking your hand, screaming, run. And then, you know, they walk out the door and he's like, I didn't catch your name. What is it? Nice to meet you, Rose. Run for your life before blowing something up. Uh, there, there's a lightness of touch to his doctor that I think a lot of us tend to forget about. We remember things like Dalek and the episodes later in that season where he where they brought out a lot of that trauma more and more building up to the finale. And in this, you know, I think Eccleston says in the extras that if they had come to him and, and given him that image and told him this is how you're going to play, that you're going to be sad and depressed and mopey, he wouldn't have done it. And I'm kind of grateful that they didn't go for the cliche almost in some ways. That They did give him a sort of a lighter touch to it. There's moments of darkness. There's those moments of that baggage as we, as we keep talking about is there, but it's, uh, it's not in the foreground so much. It's there, but it's, it's like a mountain range off in the distance. You know, it's there and it's got a presence, but it's not overwhelming. Right. I mean, he could have become a one dimensional character with that kind of, you know, heavy backstory. Yeah. And I, I'm really glad that they steered away from that. I give our, TD, you know, credit for that. He he made sure that he created a more nuanced character, and I think Christopher Eccleston really carried that through. Oh, I agree with that completely, Mary. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was you know, R T. This is all R T D's brainchild was you know the Ninth Doctor and the whole back started putting in the backstory. And, you know, something horrible happened to him with Gallifrey and the Daleks and, you know, and it was, it was great. And Eccleston played it to the T during that, his run on, you know, he, you could see, you know, the, tra the trauma that he went through, especially in the Dalek episode. And it was, it was just amazing for him to put, put that out there. And I, Kudos to him. And, you know, I'm going to be very curious to see what he's going to do next with the next adventure, because that's coming out in August. You know, yeah, I believe that. Yes. Yeah. Is, is yeah. in August. Yeah, that's when it's exactly. And yeah, answers so, all calls or whatever it's going to be called. Answers all calls. I was mm -hmm. just looking at it and it's, av it's available to pre order for download. And, you know, as you could tell, we're not recording this right at dragon con so, <laughs> so that's, that's really yet. Great, you know. <laughs> but you know so it's not out for us yet but when dragon con's around this is going to be out so yeah. you know it'll be very interesting to see what the second adventure is and you know it i don't want to see the doctor that in any of these adventures involved with any kind of dalek or you know because i want him he was surprised yeah. When that would saw, yes. yeah, that would ruin that. That would episode. that would water that down. You know, yeah. you certainly don't want to. Yeah. I mean, you have to take Daleks off the table, um, for sure. Um, by the way, in the behind the scenes uh, bonus interview, when he talks about making Dalek and the personal stuff that he was going through, it's just heartbreaking. I had, I had no idea what he was channeling when he gave that performance, but uh, yeah. uh, I'm sure mm -hmm. not only production wise, but personally, it sounds like he was going through a lot when he was making mm -hmm. when he was portraying the doctor so i can i can understand why it's kind of tough for him to revisit the role um but um but no we had it's, it's an interesting thing to talk about because we have you know i think when we talked about uh obviously when we talked about the 10th doctor and 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 river song a little while ago um you know i think uh seeing river team up with him uh, the ninth doctor eventually is certainly on my bucket list um do you guys have any uh going forward is there anything that you want to see the doctor interact with either a character or or a or a a familiar foe um well, i'm going to say it we we mentioned her earlier in the show but you know i would love to see the ninth doctor with river song I, you know, it's, it's only a matter of time till that happens. And yeah. I, I, yeah. I think it's, it's bound to happen and I would love it. Yeah. They, they did hint that there are some familiar faces coming. So hopefully yeah. that is one of them. Yeah. I would yeah. love to see them with Missy. Ooh. I think their interaction would be just amazing. <laughs> well, a, a, any Ninth Doctor master story would be worth seeing because he's, I think he's the only Doctor who's not had a, an encounter with the Master on screen. Because but even... I'm going to counter that, though. I'm going to yeah. counter that. Because at the, I think that would weaken the whole you are not alone thing. 
you know, having Missy or the master involved with the ninth doctor because the ninth doctor and the doctor, the 10th doctor for his first seasons thinks he's the only Gallifreyan left. Yeah. And if you bring in any type of the master, that's going to ruin that storyline. If you maybe know. maybe not because there's certainly story ways you can do it and giving spoilers for the tenth Doctor Dalek universe set the well, first especially one especially when you're a time traveler yeah because <laughs> in, in that set they had they had t they have tenants Doctor meeting a version of the meddling monk so you know and that becomes a whole plot point and that one is wait how are you here and you know so that's an interesting dilemma you could play with if if something happens and you have another possible universe ending catastrophe going on that means that the doctor has to work with the past master or something um on my own personal wish list i have to admit and this is just because i'm a i'm a history geek i would like to fill in some of those gaps from clive's wall that haven't already <laughs> been done yet what i what i want and it's and this is entirely being history nerd and slight conspiracy theorists i want the jf i want the jfk one i want the ninth doctor in dealey plaza i want that story i want to know what's going on there you, you know, if there was any run into doctor, the Umbrella Academy, that's what you want to do. If there, if there was any doctor that was going to be around for that incident, it would be the ninth doctor. <laughs> that's that's very true. <laughs> uh, if there was any doctor hidden in that grassy knoll, it would be nine. I, I feel like nine's going to turn out to be the Umbrella Man. So you know, that would be fun. <laughs> Who knows? You never know. Who knows? Yeah, but uh, that's an obscure reference that just went over a bunch of people's heads. <laughs> I could see him though, like Ice Warriors, maybe, or Ooh. would be kind of interesting. Or you know, there's a few other folks. I would love to see him with some members of Unit, or even some of the older companions. Wouldn't that be kind of interesting? To see him run into Ace yeah. or something like that. Oh, that would be yeah. interesting. Yeah, I could see him. You know, well, that would be real interesting. Mm -hmm. Now that we've got John Coleshaw on board doing the voice of the Brigadier, we could finally have that Ninth Doctor Brigadier story we've never had either. So, Exactly. No, that would be a unit story with the Ninth Doctor would be awesome. You know, he brought up unit a couple times. So, yes. You know. <laughs> so I think, no, I, I definitely think so. But I don't want to see, like, who... I don't want to see the Cybermen. I don't want to see the Daleks. I don't want to see Matt the Master. I know I'm shooting everyone's theories right down, but you know, <laughs> but you know, it would be, you know, I would want to see, you know, but there's so much history that we could bring in other, you know, characters that we could, you know, maybe see type thing. Yeah. And Christopher Eccl Eccleston himself said he actually wanted, uh, he thought it might be interesting to meet the cyber woman, the one from Torchwood. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, Chris, that was a horrible story. But it yes. wasn't a bad you idea. Could, you it was a bad be, execution. Yes, that's what I was gonna say. But you could do something, you could actually redeem <laughs> that yeah. storyline, maybe by because it's actually an interesting character that you could do something, you know, good with. No, well, it could be very interesting to see where they go with it. And it could, I don't, I was about to say Torchwood, but then that also brings in, he hasn't met Captain Jack yet, so. Yeah. Uh, I mean, eventually if they do want to tell one or two stories with Jack and Rose, I will be, I will be on board for that. That would be pretty special, I think. I think that's going to be a little ways off, though, given, sure, <laughs> given sure. the, the current, current, yeah, yeah. current circumstances. No, yeah. 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 I think yes. you're right about yeah. that as well. Yeah. I don't think I, we're I would, seeing Barrowman be... in many things right now. Yeah, I think but given the situation, not just with Barrowman, but also with uh, Noel Clark, but also with uh, Bruno Langley having run into some issues a few years ago, I would be very, very surprised if we get any audio set in the back half of Eccleston's season anytime soon, if ever. Um, but I, I will I will happily eat my hat one day though if, if I'm proven wrong. Do you want hot sauce on that, sir? Or do you want <laughs> how well you, you like how well you know, that? Yes. How well you know me, Mike. How well you know me. Well, well, know me. well, well there is Jackie Tyler. So there's always Jackie oh, that he can, oh. he, he yes. can hang out with. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> wow. Yeah. And, well, I'm... Big Finish has Big Finish have brought uh, Camille Cadu in a few times. So, yeah. including sure, in yeah, the yeah. including there. in the Ninth Doctor Chronicles set they mm -hmm. did without Eccleston a while back. So, I, I would I would love just a story with the two of them. Rose can be off doing something else, and it's the Ninth Doctor and Jackie stuck together having an adventure. <laughs> I, I would I would pay good money to hear that. That would be interesting <laughs> to see. I agree with that. Or you know, continuation maybe of the um, of the Adam story. You know, you know the companion who uh, failed. You know yeah, what happened to him on Earth. <laughs> no, just as a later part of the season. You know, and everything to as a possible storyline. I know they did a companion a chronicle story with that character. So it would be very I, interesting. Nobody has mentioned the Slovene. We're not going to right. either. Uh, no, uh, I think there. I think uh, you know. In in the is it the second episode uh, where he takes Rose to the uh, end of the end of Earth, right, yeah, or whatever. The second episode. Um, yeah. It, he definitely seems to have some history with some races there, which oh, a lot of those true. I don't think were ever filled, you know, followed up on. So that would be kind of interesting to see, maybe um, to to get you know. To introduce some of those a little bit more, or going moisturize me, moisturize me. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 not that one. <laughs> you don't want to see more, no more Cassandra. <laughs> but uh, no, that would be that would be kind of cool. Um, uh, so I know we're you know we're getting kind of close to the end. So I just want to mention because we've talked about some of the cast, but we have to mention Dan Starkey. I mean, like he yes. his voice like Once pops again. out. I know, like, all of a sudden, I'm like, is that Strax? Yeah, that's yeah, what I, I said, too. <laughs> is Strax fighting in the, with, the, with the Roman army? You know, wait a minute. I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> no, either, anyway, it wasn't really a stretch for Dan, but it was good to hear his voice. Uh, yes. It was fun. It was really fun. I, and no, it did work for the character. I thought, I thought the casting in this was, was wonderful. I, yeah. Everything was really well done. I didn't think there was much that was like, oh, that just doesn't fit that character's voice or the attitude. I thought it was really, really, really nicely done, which was pretty yeah. cool. And it's not a very big cast either. I mean, that's one of the, the things I always am pleasantly surprised by with Big Finish is, you know, with a handful of actors, you can literally create world whole worlds full of people that, you know, on TV, you'd have to bring in hundreds of extras and dozens of speaking parts. But, you know, on audio, the pictures are always better and you can have this cast as big or small as you want. No, and that's nice. That's what I love about audio adventures, because a lot of times you could play, have people play different characters and stuff. And you hear the rest of the characters were played by the crew. It's like, okay, you know, yeah. hey, you, how do you want to be a voice today? Sure. Yeah, okay. So, you know, <laughs> I'll put down my toilet brush. I'll do it. It'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, compared to other audios, though, that we've been hearing from Big Finish, how does this rate up against, like, you know, some of the other ones, like the the 10th Doctor ones that are starting up now. You know, David's been doing it for a couple of years now. Mm. But, you know, and, you know, how does this rate up to compare to those? Or how does it create up to some of the older Doctors? I would say this was a really good, solid effort, especially for the first one in a series, which, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes those are a little rocky. But I, I feel like they did a good job with this one. I really felt like the Ninth Doctor was back. And I think that's what I wanted most from it. And and they did deliver. I mean, you can get nitpicky about it. I mean, uh, the, the music at times was too overwhelming, which Big Finish is kind of famous for. Hey, it was better than the River Song. Uh, yeah, that's well, I mean, yeah, that, yeah, that's a low bar. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, for the, for the most part. And, and also the voice effects you know, like the mechanoid voice. It is sometimes hard to understand the aliens when they're speaking. I don't, and I don't think that's necessary. I'm glad you brought that up, Mary, because there was points where the doctor, when he was talking to Audrey and he was like the phantom or whatever, he was hard to hear sometimes. And I, I know they did that purposely because he was supposed to be, you know, out of sorts with reality, but it was there was parts of it. I don't know if it was just my hearing going, or if it was. No, it was hard. Of course, we're about the same age, so. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That, that's true. Yeah, I so. mean, it's one of those things where you have to balance effect with, you know. Also, you have to understand what the plot, what the plot's trying to, what the plot's trying to do, and the exposition that's there. So it's it's a fine line to tread there. Um, 
in terms of, I mean, you have to, I think if you compare this with some of the other Doctor debuts on audio, I think it's on the stronger side of things. Um, it's, it strikes me the more I think about it that when it comes to Big Finish, especially in the early years, you know, it took time for particularly Peter Davison, but also Sylvester McCoy to find their feet again in the role, having kind of been away from it for, for a while there. I think of the various doctors, I think Colin Baker and Paul McGann are the ones who really kind of came in the strongest here. And I would, mm -hmm. I would rank Eccleston's kind of return to the role here along those lines. I mean, there's, there's a sense of him coming back fully formed and aflame. I think it's, I think as you said earlier, Mike, that you never kind of get the feeling of, Oh, that's a, he wouldn't have said that line or that's not quite the ninth doctor. And I certainly don't get that feeling here. And certainly in terms of production values, you know, it's a strong set. I mean, it's, it's a showcase, I think for everything that big finish does and does well, whether it's the casting or the sound design or the music, which, the music is good, don't get me wrong, and there's a very sort of cinematic feel to it that I think Big Finish has really kind of adopted, not just in Doctor Who, but in the, the other ranges that they do in the last few years. Um, the sound mix could be a bit better in terms of toning down the yeah. music, as we talked about, but um, that's that's a problem that Who on TV has been struggling with for years now. That's so at true. least... You know, at least Big Finish has, has captured that again, but very much my feeling was is that it was... <laughs> captured the real feeling yeah. of the era. You can't, you can't yeah. do close caption when it comes to Big Finish, though. So. <laughs> yeah. that's, no, exactly. that's very true. So, you know, it's, it's, for, it's the verisimilitude is there perhaps a bit too much at times. <laughs> No, yeah, I, I agree with certainly that. don't have as much experience with Big Finish as, say, Matthew does. Uh, and most of the stuff that uh, I've listened to we've done on the show... And, uh, you know, I've been I've been pretty critical of a lot of their stories, um, but this one I would definitely recommend uh, this one, especially if you are, you know, if the Ninth Doctor is your jam, you, I don't see how you can pass this up. Like, this is just it's everything you want. And and there's there's uh, a door opening for more. So, uh, you know, you you definitely start want to start with this one. And go forward, and this one, like I said, it might be you know like a, a outstretched a little bit, but it's it's still Eccleston carrying the load. Like he he's not there's not a period of like more than five minutes where he's not like providing a voice. So so if you want if you want Chris Eccleston, you're gonna get about three hours <laughs> of Chris Eggleston. Um, oh, very and, much so. And it's uh, yeah. and it's a it's a it's a decent enough story that if this was a actual like live action premiere or whatever, I think it would be uh, you know this would be a good one to start with, no matter what medium it was in. Oh, very yeah. much so. One of the things I did notice, and you know, a lot of I haven't noticed this a lot with other doctors that was very prevalent with his doctor was his relationship with the TARDIS itself. Mm. And even in this storyline, the TARDIS brought the doctor back to normal space after he went through, you know, got warped in. Mm. And it was, you know, and it brought it through the key, which was pretty awesome. Yeah. And, you know, that was that was a nice little, you know, thing nice they did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. There's some shades of Scream of the Shalka there with that other ninth doctor, uh, Richard E. Grant. Because if you remember, there's a <laughs> sequence of that. That is true. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Very similar, actually. Yeah. Hey, they. I know where they got it from now. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, and that would be actually a neat, that would be a great storyline if they can get Richard Richard Grant to actually yeah. play a the Ninth Doctor to meet Eccleston's Doctor. You know, somehow yeah. realities are mixed and stuff. Yeah. Oh, that Coming. would be freaking awesome. Yeah. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions, Doctor Who, The Ninth Doctor Adventures, nine times two. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, it, it hasn't been, it's one of those things that it's, it's out there. Who knows, right? Like, um, they can literally do whatever they want. And they have, they're not afraid to team up uh, doctors, uh, you know, on different incarnations. They're not afraid to, you know, team up different characters with different doctors, depending, you know, even if it doesn't, by the TV show or whatever, it doesn't make sense. It's still like with Big Finish where they're like, we're going to go ahead and do this anyway because A, we know it'll sell and B, whatever excuse we make is is fine. It'll, it'll, we can get around it. Yeah. Um, if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I, I think that, uh, you know, certainly I wouldn't put it past them to do something like, you know, I mean, to have something like that. Uh, obviously, they're not afraid to do offshoot doctors either because they've done that before as well. Yeah. I was going to say, if you want an example of doctor team ups, all you have to do is look at the out of time miniseries they've been putting out in bits and pieces with David Tennant's doctor, the yes. most recent one, putting him with Peter Davison, which for those who haven't heard that one, um, Mark Gatiss is also in the cast of that one, and it is an absolute hoot to hear. And again, another wonderful example of uh, Big Finish being able to take various strands of the of the Doctor Who canon, as it were, together and putting them together in one heck of a story. Mm -hmm. Very much so. And that's that would be cool. You know, do we want to see 9 and 10 together in a Big Finish audio? That would be fun. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, let, let's 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 get the you know the fiftieth anniversary we were supposed to get. Let's get nine, ten, and eleven. Like boom, 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 all together. You know. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, unfortunately, the war the war doctor is no longer an option. But you know, we've got several well, others, and and I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, they have another war duck doctor. Yeah, yeah Jonathan Jonathan Carley, who's uh, set will be out. Well, we'll be out a little later in the month from when we're recording this, but we'll be out by Dragon Time, uh, I mean, Dragon Con time. I mean, we we always talk about like TV wise, the 60th anniversary is coming up, and what does Chibnall have in store? Well, you can bet the big finish is not going to like rest and just sleep during that experience. I mean, they've got something oh. I bet planned too. Oh, and, I'm sure. They and do. Um, you know, I, as far as this, does this open the door for more doctors? Look, I know that Matt Smith is probably just way too busy to put this, something like this on his schedule for now, not to say that he wouldn't do it, but he's just busy. Like he's probably he's the busy one being, of it. He's, right. He's busy being a Targaryen. So it's okay. exactly. Right. So, um, and uh, you know, as well as, uh, but as far as Peter, Peter's going to, once Peter like gets the, gets to do big finish, we're going to have, you know, Peter Capaldi adventures forever. And it's going to be great. So I, yeah. I definitely think that this is just like the opening now, whether or not this opens the door for Chris to actually be on TV again as a doctor, I think that's still a pipe dream. But. Yeah, that's a that t TV is a, as I often have to tell people who who bring up the oh but who bring up the opinion of oh Big Finish should be running the TV show. They're two very different media writing for two very different audiences. I mean, with the way we talked about that, you know, you shouldn't go into the set if you don't know who the Ninth Doctor is would never fly on TV. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, the Big Finish audience, as Big Finish themselves admit, is a fan audience. It's the audience, it's a loyal audience who will come to Doctor Who, I don't want to say no matter what, but they're here because they're Doctor Who fans. And, you know, you can do story arcs stretched out over over a decade of audios as they did with the Ninth Doctor, with the Seventh Doctor at one point. Um, or you can do some very sort of fan referencing and, you know, referencing and storylines and whatnot that are only going to make sense to somebody who's seen a story from 1966 <laughs> as well as well as something more modern. Mm -hmm. um, you could never do that on TV, but also, mm -hmm. you know, I think as Paul McGann, for example, has talked about, you know, you can go into a studio and you can spend a day or two and you can record a whole box set that if you were doing it as a TV show would be a year's out of your life, basically spent doing nothing but that. So they're very different media. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I would love to see Eccleston back in the 60th. But, you know, just because he's doing Big Finish doesn't mean he's going to be back on TV. So, you know, exactly. temper your expectations. So, so take what you can get. And that's this exactly. is what you want. Yeah, exactly. yeah. And, no, exactly. and enjoy because it's not second rate. Right. They're, and they're right. Exactly. Kind of a lot of fun. These are pretty spectacular. And, you know, I was a little hesitant, you know, going into it, like going, all right, let's. You know, hopefully he's going to have a great attitude about it. All that's out the window. I'm ready for the next one. I'm um, I'm looking forward to seeing what comes next with this series. Yeah. So you know, yeah. bring it on, folks, as we like to say. I so mean, we are how, actually I mean, almost Briggs out of time. Did his job. He made exactly. us want to come back for more. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. He made us care about the sixth doctor. Damn it. So. <laughs> so. Yeah. You know, and, you know and let's see him do let's see him do the same thing with the ninth so i'm yeah. all for it so very cool so we got two minutes left any you know would you recommend this we usually do one out of five tardises on our show one being the worst five being the best so let's start with matthew what is your review of this one 
your rating? My rating of it is going to be a four out of five, I think. It's it's great to hear Eccleston back in the role. There's an engaging story here. Maybe it's it's sprawled out a bit longer than it needs to be. But I think if you're new to Big Finish and you're craving more Ninth Doctor, this is a definite place to start. And if you want more of my thoughts on this audio, check out my review over on a website called Warp Factor. Definitely. All right, Mr. Mike Gordon. Uh, yeah, this is definitely recommended for all Doctor Who fans. Uh, I know Big Finish has been killing us when it comes to like <laughs> great, great stories and team ups and 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 people that they're bringing us because of you know uh, mostly because of the pandemic because they've had a lot of uh, talent to choose from. But this one has to rise to the top. I mean, this is special. This is something that uh, as a Doctor Who fan, as a ninth Doctor fan, you don't want to miss out because. Uh, this is something that we didn't think we'd ever get. And uh, I definitely think uh, it was worth it. I'd say it deserves, you know, a, at least a four, maybe even a four and a half stars because uh, it's great. It's great having Chris back. Tardis is not stars. Tardis is, right. Sorry. Yeah, you know, we've only been doing this for how many years now? <laughs> and Mary Ogle, how about you, my dear? I think I'm going to give it four and a half. And I I will say that this is this is something that could have kind of skated by just on the hype of Christopher Eccleston coming back, and it doesn't. It really delivers. It's a good story. It's a great cast. It's great supporting characters. And, I mean, yes, there are some nitpicky things about it. That's why I'm giving it, you know, taking off 0.5 points. But overall, this this. I'm, I would highly recommend this to anybody, and especially if you're a Ninth Doctor fan. I mean, you're going to love it. That is awesome. I agree with that completely. I'm going to go ahead, and I am going to give this... Damn it, I hate agreeing with you guys. I really hate it, because we do it all the damn time. <laughs> but I'm going to give it a four and a half also. Um, not just, like you said, not just for Eccleston being back. That should be a five alone. But for basically for Earth, you know, the podcast itself and for the recording of it, it brings down half because, you know, I'm an editor also, you know, doing audio editing and stuff. And I think they could do better with, like you guys have mentioned, with the mix of the audio and the voices and the sound and the background and everything. And that's what pulls it down a little bit for me. But I love the characters of Nova. I love Audrey. I, yeah, more Nova. Yeah, definitely more Nova. I yes. think she's going to be pretty kick-ass. And I'm really looking forward to seeing her character grow and everything. So definitely, you know, check it out. And I want to say a big thank you to the folks at Brick Tracks for having us do this for them, having us be able to be involved with them as always. Carol and her crew knock it out of the ballpark all the time. And it's always great mm -hmm. for us to be involved with them year after year. And thank you so, so much. On behalf of myself, Mr. Mike Gordon, Mary Ogle, and Matthew Kressel, we want to thank you all. Have a great Dragon Con, and be sure to check out our podcast, EarthStationWho.com. We're up on Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, Google, even Amazon, so you could even go, hey, Alexa, play the Earth Station Who podcast. <laughs> so please, you, know, you can thank us later. Thank you, Dragon Con. Have a great time. We thank will you. see you soon. Bye, Bye guys. <laughs>